Uh, Megan, thank you for joining me for Somatics today. Speaking of joining, we're going to work on three of our lovely joints today. That would be our ankles, our knees, and our hips. This practice will focus on our legs. Those lovely limbs that help us to reach our destinations, take us away from whatever we need to get away from, they are multi-purposeful right now, right? So say thank you to your legs, and if you want to put a blanket down for extra padding, you can. You might also want a blanket or a pillow for your head. Otherwise, no special props. So we're going to start on our back today. Let's start with your knees bent and feet on the floor so you can really allow the back and spine to relax. You can take any movements you want. So in order to focus on the legs, it's usually easier to do if, if we're able to let the back and spine release. And we're going to start with some uh, arms at the sides and just feel yourself from your legs. And just the left leg, you're going to extend the left leg out and reach through the heel. You might pull the top of the foot towards your, towards your hip, press it through, and then let it go and shake it out. Slide it back again. Pause for a moment. We'll do that two more times. So we're going to build our way into a body stretch. Take just your left leg, reach it long, press through the heel, hug the muscles of the bones. You might even feel it all the way up into your butt cheek. Squeeze the muscles on that left leg. Exhale, let them go. Relax it, shake it out. Slide it back again. So make sure your back and spine's relaxed. Sometimes the back is arching perhaps when we're extending the legs. So you want to let the low back relax. Last one, extend just that left leg. Press through, just be aware. Let's hold this one a little bit longer. Be aware of what it feels like to feel the muscles wrap around the bones and just that left leg. Squeeze those muscles. And then sigh out the mouth if you'd like. Let it go, shake it out. Just feeling your whole left leg line. All right, and bring that back. We'll do the same thing with the right leg. So sensing your right leg, you can begin to slide it out. And if you have a really sticky, sticky mat, what you could do is fold your mat in half and find more of a clear surface or a slippery surface to slide that leg out. Slide it out and then press through the heel and the ball mount of the foot, but also draw the kneecap up your thigh, tighten the muscles and that just the right leg and then let it go. Let's see how far you can notice that. Notice how each of the joints, the muscles between the joints help, help to engage and then they release. Let go, we'll do that two more times, sliding the right leg out. Squeeze the muscles, you might even feel it all the way up into the hip and the buttocks. Draw the knee up. Exhale, relax it. Slide it back again, reposition, make sure your back and spine is comfortable. Last one for the right leg. Take just the right leg out, slide it, press through the heel, try to squeeze the muscles. Imagine taking a step on the earth right now and you're going heel the to toe, pressing, Hold this one a little bit longer. Notice if you can feel your shin, your calf, front and back of the thigh, and then let it all go. Shake it out. Slide that right leg back. We're gonna do the same thing, but with both legs. And if your low back is popping up too much, creating an arch in your low back and discomfort in your low back, then I encourage you to either not do this, or before we start the process of extending, press the low back and low ribs into the ground so the tailbone will lift. Keep that so it's like our pelvic tilt where we're, put, we're gently taking that low back down and lifting tail, and then you can do that, and then extend the legs. So legs might not come as close to the ground, but your low back is long. Press through the heels, head and neck are relaxed. We'll do it three times. Tighten the muscles in both legs. Maybe one feels different than the other. And then let it all go. Shake it out. Slide them back again. Check that your low back is comfortable. So you'll notice the difference for me. If I don't, if I let my low back arch, then I get my legs all the way down to the ground, but that's not necessarily comfortable for my low back because it's, it's, it's kind of crampy. So what I like to do, and you can do it either way, is press the low back down on an exhalation, then extend the legs. They won't come as close to the ground, but I can still hug the muscles, squeezing, tightening. Imagine pressing on a pedal of some sort, gas pedal, bike pedal, Draw the kneecaps up the thighs, even work the backs of the knees into the ground, and then let it go. Shake them out, release any of that tension you were feeling and that constriction in the legs. Walk the feet back again. All right, 
one last time. And this time on the last one, if you want to turn this into a full body stretch, you can, meaning taking your arms overhead. So take the legs out first, press through the heels and the balls of the feet, draw the tops of the feet towards your shins. You can press low back into the ground. And if you want to add the arms, reach the arms as well, making your whole body long. So feel the muscles wrap around the bones, squeezing, breathing, exhaling, releasing. All right. Come back to knees bent feet on the floor. So if you want to scoot yourself to one side of the mat, I may just because I happen to have a lovely slippery floor here, you can do that. So we would be going to the left side first. And we're going to leave the right leg bent unless if it's super comfortable for you to extend your right leg and you want to take it out long, you can do that. But you may want to consider putting a blanket or something underneath it so that low back stays long and relaxed. So it could be something like this with the right leg. Right leg is going to relax. It's, we're not working on that one yet. So it could be the leg is comfortable if you put something under it or you may just want to keep the right knee bent. And then take your left leg. We're going to do more of a movement now instead of that holding. So you're going to slide the left leg out. Once you've slid it out, you're going to rotate the thigh outward. So in other words, your toes are going to turn your little toe towards the ground. External rotation of the thigh. Then once you do that, rotate it first and then slide your heel up towards your buttocks. So this is where you'll want to be, make sure that your floor is slippery. And then once you slide it up, you're going to slide it back let it go. <clears throat> what I might do is actually double up my mat so that I know that I'm still in the camera for you. And I can get all kinds of slippery now. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave my right leg bent for a few and then maybe extend it, but I want to keep the low back relaxed. So again, the movement pattern is slide that left leg out. So extension, rotate the thigh bone out, pinky toe down towards the ground, draw the heel towards your buttocks. So we're in like a half body kanasan if we were doing a regular yoga pose. And then slide it back and we'll let it relax. Bring it all the way back in again. Let's do that a few more times. Do, do it at your pace, so faster or slower. Going extension, external rotation, heel up towards your buttocks, heel away, toes back up, shake it out, slide it back. Do one more for the left leg. Sliding long and think of your leg just going for a swim. Rotating outward, heel towards your sit bones, back out and relax. Bring it back. All right, we're gonna do the same thing but we're gonna go in the opposite direction with that left leg. So left leg will go long. Now you're gonna internally rotate the thigh. So think of your big toe side of your foot <clears throat> coming down towards the floor. So outer hip will almost feel like it's lifting. And now you're going to pull the heel to the outside of the hip somewhere. And it might only come part way, like to here, that's okay. And then once you get there, just let it fall. So this is that internal rotation of the hip. Take a breath there, slide it back out. Long, bring the heel all the way back. Let's do that one a few times. So the leg goes into extension, rotate it inward towards the center of the body. Draw the heel out towards that left hip. Let the inner knee just fall. Slide it back out. Let it relax. So at this point, if you want the right leg long too, you can do that. Left leg comes back. Let's do two more. Extend it long. Rotate it inward, big toe down. So thigh bone rolls in. Take the heel out towards the left hip. And then take it out again. Shake it out. Last one, bring it back, knee bent, relax the back, relax the weight of the pelvis. So always come back to knee bent, the space of relaxation. Extend the leg, turn the toe in, heel out towards the hip, slide it back, take it all the way back. All right. That's it for the left leg for a moment. Feel free to move your pelvis in any way or hug your knees into your chest. And then go ahead and if it's comfortable for you, extend both legs out and just feel your two legs. Feel the left and the right. Notice if there's any difference, particularly in and around the joints. Just taking a quiet moment to be still in your legs. 
sensing space from toes to hips. And we'll be having fun exploring the right leg. So bring your feet back to the ground. Relax the low back. Right leg, you're gonna slide it out long and then you're gonna externally rotate it. So think of rolling the thigh bone towards the outer right side of the mat, the pinky toe down towards the ground. Pull the heel up somewhere towards your sits bones and you can play with, it can be right at the middle, it can be wider away, that's up to you. Slide it long again and then let it go, shake it out. We'll continue with that movement pattern for the right leg, slide it back, relax the back, release the weight of the backside into the ground. Slide the leg out, externally rotate it, pinky toe down towards the earth, heel towards your buttocks. Take a moment to let the outer thigh drop open. So nice big stretch in the inner thigh, groin area, slide it long, let it go. And just feel yourself from the standpoint of the joints all coordinating to make this movement. Let's do two more, sliding out long, turn the Toes and the ankle outward, knee outward, and hip outward. Slide the heel towards the base of your spine. Slide it back out long. Let it go. Back to foot on the floor. Relax the weight of the pelvis. Feel yourself from a space of balance and symmetry. Last one. Slide that right leg out. Externally rotate the thigh. Bring the heel up towards you. Let the thigh drop open. So we're in no hurry. Let gravity do its work and then take it back out, back. All right, that's right leg and external rotation. Let's do right leg and internal rotation. So extend that right leg, really easy. Bring the big toe towards the ground, so internally rotate the thigh. And then you're gonna to begin to slide the heel, the right heel towards your right butt cheek. So this is my tighter side in internal rotation, so I may not go as far this first time. I wanna feel like I can just drop that inner thigh and then let it come back. Remember, it's an exploration, right? And sometimes we'll feel a lot of uh, loose space, a lot of spaciousness and freedom, and other times we'll, we'll feel stuck and just either decide that you wanna explore the stillness of that stuck space, so sometimes I'll do that, or I'll slowly move through that stuck space versus trying to jam my way through and then sliding it back out. Relaxing it, foot back to the floor. Right leg goes long. Turn your thigh bone inward, your big toe down towards the floor. Start to bring the right heel towards your right hip and then let that whole weight of the thigh bone just fall to the ground. Feel that nice stretch through the top of the thigh, the outer hip. Slide the foot back out, let it go. Foot back, we'll do one more in that internal, rota or, yeah, internal rotation, take it long. I might have done more on this side because this side needs it more. Turn it inward. Slide the heel out. Let the leg, just feel the weight of the leg. You're not pushing it down, you're just letting it fall. And then slide it back out. Relax it. Slide it back in. All right, so we're going we're gonna to do some double time. So we have this movement now with our legs. It's like a lovely little leg dance. And we're going to do it together. So you're gonna slide both legs out long, and then you're going to internally rotate the, the left leg and externally rotate the right leg. So big toe side of left foot to the floor, pinky toe side of the right foot, and then I'm gonna slide both legs towards my torso. So that left foot will wind, wind up somewhere outside the left hip and right foot somewhere at the base of my spine. Same thing we were doing, but just each leg is, one leg is in internal rotation, that left leg, and one leg is in external rotation, the right leg. Just pausing there, feeling it, let the legs drop as long as you want. And then slowly, so you don't want to push them through, like there should be maybe a little bit of drag. Slowly take them out, feel the muscles that are extending those legs for you. Come back to the center, shake them out, slide them all the way back, so the ankles are right about underneath the knees. So there's our flexion. And you're gonna go out long again. Go the opposite way. So left leg, pinky toe side down, external rotation. Right leg, big toe side down, internal rotation. And then start to drag the heels towards your torso. Left heel somewhere towards the base of your spine. 
right heel somewhere outside the right hip. I like to pause there. Slide him back out. Feel that sliding motion, relax it. Slide him back in. So that's the motion and you can explore it at your pace, but I encourage you to go really slow. So both legs go long. Roll both legs in one direction. So in my case, both legs are rolling to the right and then draw the heels to the opposite side. So if the legs are rolling to the right, heels go to the left. Slowly slide it back out. Relax, heels slide back. And we go the other way. Take the legs long first, keep that low back relaxed. Legs rotate to the left, heels slide out to the right. Take that moment to let your legs fall. Slide them back out, relax, bring the heels in. Do one or two more on your own and just really feel the movement, the coordination that it takes between ankles, knees and hips. So you can even internally rotate the ankles to get the hips to move. You can internally rotate the knees. So you can think of starting this movement from different joints, the ankle, the knee, or the hip. The hip is usually the one we typically feel like we're initiating the movement from. But I like to imagine moving from my knees first. What does it feel like to roll your knees to one side and then drag the heels? So if you can visualize each joint, you can play with the idea of moving from that joint or those joints left and right. Finish this last cycle for yourself. Uh, you can always take a rest, especially in this last one. Keep your head and back relaxed. Sliding them out. Heels come back. There's our flexion. Sliding them long again. I'm just finishing off this round. You can do the same or do another round. It feels really good today. Sliding back. And then heels back underneath you. So at this point, it may feel really good to do a full body stretch or hug your knees in. I'm going to do both. I'm going to do a full body stretch first. You do what you like. This is that yoga. I call it yoga recess, right? <laughs> do what feels good for you. Stretching out and then sighing and letting it go. And then also, without the help of the arms, use your hip flexors, use the strength of the legs, draw your thighs in, let your tailbone lift up. And then at some point, if your arms want to come to the backs of the thighs or shins, you can. But squeeze those legs in. You might even tuck your chin. Squeeze everything in towards the center. And let that go. All right, we're going to be coming up to a seated posture next. And I happen to have a wall, so I'm going to show that you can do this at a wall. You, this is not one that we can do seated in a chair. So, if, um, so keep a wall handy just in case. So I'm going to roll to one side, take my time, maybe even pause there because that feels pretty darn good. Press into my hands and come on up. This is another one where we want some slippy slidey. So again, I'll show you at the wall. If you don't want to sit on a wall, you don't have to or anything with your spine. Um, but what I would do is I take this blanket and I'm going to put it <clears throat> right under the edge of my buttocks. Then I'm also going to take my back to the wall. So if you're a person that really struggles to sit on the ground because if you're tighter through your hamstrings and it's making you round your back like this, then I'd suggest trying to go to a wall and taking your back. Whoops, I missed my blanket. <laughs> take your back up. So I'm going to move those, all my cushy props away. So we're going to start with the legs wide. And if you are using the wall, be sure to try to connect your shoulder blades and the base of the head. That'll keep us from going into that head forward. And you may not have your, your sacrum may not be touching the wall. It, it can, but see how, mu how much you can be straight without straining. And just shake your legs out for a moment. So we're in extension first but we're gonna do a very similar movement we just did. You're going to extend your legs as they are, and then you're gonna imagine that your feet wanna have a little discussion with one another. So you're gonna to start to slide your heels towards one another. They may even touch, they may not. Once they get as close as they wanna be, slide the heels towards the base of your spine. And there's that external rotation, both legs, and then just let them drop open. And then what we're gonna do, instead of taking them long again, is squeeze them upward 
together. So now we're going to feel those adductor muscles in the inner thighs. And then you can take them back out again. Relax them. So it's almost like we're making a little circle with the legs. You'll start with them wide, as wide as they can go comfortably. I've got that wall supporting me. Slide them together, and as they're coming together, maybe the heels touch. Draw the heels up towards your perineum, so it might be further away from you or as close as you can come comfortably. Let them drop open, so feel that weight, that weight, 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 let them drop. Then you can even press the big toe side of the foot, toes together to feel those inner thighs, lift the legs up, and then take them back out again. All right, hopefully you're not getting hung up on, if you have shag carpet, let me know how that works, because I always wondered what would happen if I tried to do this on some shag. So sliding the legs wide, bring them together. You can think of like a frog, right? Doing a little froggy stroke here for the legs. Hug them and take them long. Let's do a few more, wide apart and long, long and together. Draw the heels up towards you. Drop the knees open. Feel that nice inner thigh stretch. Then squeeze the thighs together. Feel the inner thighs strong. Take it out. Let's do two more. Keep the shoulders relaxed and the head together. And just again, focusing on the coordination. The ankles, the knees, and the hips are all asked to take part in this movement. Letting it feel flowy, like if you were swimming in the water, like a frog. Last one, finish it up. And then take them long and relax for a moment. All right, if you need to resituate yourself and maybe you're not on a wall, you can also be using your hands behind you, right? So now we're going to take those legs out long and we're going to do it just slightly different because we're going to do one leg at a time. We're going to explore that internal and external rotation with the leg long. So you're going to take your, let's do left leg first. Take your left leg, leg and turn the big toe side of the foot downward. So that's internal rotation of the thigh. And then drag it towards the center, maybe even just slightly past the center. That's up to you. Now, before you take it back, turn the pinky toe side down. So externally rotate it and then drag it out. And that's it. I call this swimming leg. Big toe down. Take it across, little toe down, take it out to the side. Super simple, but you can even close your eyes. And notice that though if we look at it, I just said close your eyes, but you can open them for a second. It looks like all the movement is in the foot, right? That's what we're seeing is the foot moving. But feel it from your hip joint, from your knee joint, maybe even a little bit going on in the ankle here. And just letting it swim through this. You can always keep a soft bend in the knee, but we want to try to avoid too much bends. But if you, you know, if it, you know, it feels better to bend it, go for it. The straighter the leg, the more the hip is going to do the work for us. And you might even test that. So you bend the knee and do it, and you'll notice there's less for the hip. It's a little more intense on the hip if I keep this leg line straight. And I'm feeling the power of outer and inner thigh and hip. Lovely. A nice freedom through that left hip, last one. And then let it go, shake them out. Readjust your spine if you need to, so you're tall, I know I need to. We'll work with the right leg. So you're gonna turn big toe side in, there's your internal rotation. Drag it somewhere to the center, maybe even slightly cross the center. If you go further beyond the center, you get a good bigger, bigger stretch in that left outer hip. Then we turn the pinky toe down, externally rotate the thigh, and drag it out. And then back in again. So for me, I have to focus this is again my tighter leg. So I know there's a tendency for my knee to want to bend, but I do my best. Even if it limits my range of mobility, I might not move as far on this side. So a uh, smaller difference from left to right, but I'm moving it from my hip. I feel it moving from my hip. But you might find you want to bend that knee a little too. It's, there's not a right or wrong. The, the, the right in somatics is that it's voluntary movement. We're paying attention and we're asking our body to move. Taking your time. 
I actually got kudos from my teenagers today, which doesn't happen very often. They had to take a, you know, they're homeschooling, had to take a test on, um, it's an AP psych test, and one of the questions was about the somatic system. And they came to me to make sure they got the answer right. So I felt really special because they knew that word, somatic, right? <laughs> the little things that make us feel good as mothers. <laughs> and then just going back and forth. And then come back to the center, relax it for a moment. Okay. So if you're on that wall, this next one gets a little bit dicey trying to stay on the wall. So I would encourage you to scoot slightly away if you can, and if that doesn't work, that's okay. So we're just going to keep, this is all this beautiful, this beautiful exploration of mobility is really what I like to think of in the knees, ankles, and hips. So the first thing we want to see is we're going to do our ankles themselves because the ankles do actually, well, we do this. If you want to stay on the wall, you can, sorry, go back is we have, um, inversion and eversion in the ankles. So if your legs are straight out in front of you, which I'd like them to be, feel your big toe side of your foot and then draw the big toe side of the foot towards your inner knees or towards the base of your spine. So that's different. I'm not dropping them down. I'm pulling them in. So that's your, Inversion, it's like I'm trying to have the soles of my feet look at each other, especially the big toes, and then I'm releasing it. So it's like they're trying to look at each other. So what you should feel is kind of a fairly decent stretch in the outer ankle, and then let it go. But also notice what you feel in the muscles and the shins and the calves, right? Because that's the connection. The ankle is the connection point between the foot and the lower leg. So you're going to feel this. You might feel it in the sole of your foot. Notice the muscles tightening in the arches of the feet and then letting them go. So just exploring this inversion of the ankles. Starting to get fatigued, I am, especially my right foot. What do you feel? All right. And then let that go. So the little counter to that is the eversion. So eversion would be just the opposite. Notice your pinky toe side. Say hello. You can wiggle your pinkies if you want. And now you're going to take the pinky toe side of your foot and I'm not dropping them down. I'm going to keep my toes more or less pointed up towards the sky, but I'm going to pull the pinky toe side of my foot towards my outer knee or my outer shin. So now the feet are, it's like they're having a little squ squabble and they don't want to look at each other, turning away from one another. And then again, I'm going to relax. And now as I do this, I'm going to sense that stretch in the inner ankle. I feel a nice stretch to the arch of the foot, the inner calf, a little tightness in the outer calf, pinky toe side of the foot, and letting go. You can do this to your breath or you can do it. Just make sure you're breathing in a way that feels good. Let the feet turning away from one another. And note too, you might feel any of these movements, even though it's ankle, all the way up into your hips. Do you feel it in your knees? Do you feel it in your hips? All right. So we're going to now take this inversion and eversion into a full leg movement. But the reason why we did this first is I'm going to encourage you to try to move your leg from your foot because the foot is our first responder to the earth, right? When we walk, so you really want to wake up our feet with this one a little bit. So you can sit on the edge of a blanket. You can try staying on the wall, but I think you're probably going to run into the wall. I tried it that way. I was like iffy. So you're going to come forward away from the wall if you can. And now what we're going to do is we'll do one leg at a time. You're going to do your left leg. You're going to turn your, turn your big toe side inward. So that's that inversion. So do the ankle first, then start to pull that foot same movement we did before, but pull the arch of the foot towards you. So the way I sometimes describe this one is, imagine you have just came out of the bathroom and you've got toilet paper on the sole of your foot and you're trying to see that toilet paper. So you're trying to flip the foot up, the big, big toe side. And then in doing that, the knee will drop open. It follows, the rest of the leg line is following the foot. But we didn't get to see that toilet paper, at least it's not on the big toe side. So now we're gonna do just the opposite. You're going to roll. You're on your pinky toe side of your foot. You're going to press into the foot. I'm not lifting from my hip. I'm going to press into the foot 
and get my big toe down, the heel down, that inner heel, and now I'm gonna roll all the way onto the big toe side and my leg is gonna follow and I'm gonna try to like look at the pinky toe side. Maybe the toilet paper's on that side. Yeah, still don't see it. So now I'm gonna lift the leg back up to the center and slide it back out. So this starts as a foot movement, but eventually, I'm getting rid of my blanket, you may have noticed. Um, eventually, it becomes a whole body movement, but we're starting from the foot. So big toe side in. You can use your hands to support yourself. Slide the foot in like you're trying to look at the sole of the foot, drop the knee open. Yeah. So you can actually like take your gaze, drop your upper body, and then press the foot down into the ground. Big toe side down. And then again, look the other way. So we're trying to look at the sole of the foot, bring the kneecap back up, take it down. And you can make it really playful, right? Big toe in, slide it, drop open. And sometimes you might be wider here. That's absolutely fine. You might be out here more, press into the foot. And each, you know, all these positions just give us different feelings. Look at the sole of the foot, bring it back up. Take it long. So I try to vary it. Sometimes I'll draw, draw the foot in and take the heel really close to my perineum and drop it open. So it's right at the center line there. Take it across. But I can also do it where I keep the foot wider out to the side. Different feeling, right? And I might not come as close. Still rolling through the sole of the foot. Knee down. Take a look. No, oh, nothing there. In my house, it's probably a lot more likely, not toilet paper, but that you have chicken turds on your foot. It's highly common in my house, unfortunately. Not in the house, but when you're walking in the yard. And then you're sliding it, do a couple more. Sorry if I just changed your focus to chicken turds. <laughs> Think eggs, lovely eggs if you're an egg eater. Ugh. Let's do one more. Take your time exploring. So ankle that inversion, slide the heel towards you, and then you're full, fully dropping onto the pinky toe side. Now you're gonna come down. There's the eversion, because the pinky toe side's lifting. Go the other way. Take it back down, and take it out. Shake them out. If you can find a place just to rest and be comfortable, just notice the two legs, see if they feel different from one another just from that movement. We've done similar movements already. All right, and then we're gonna get ready to do the second side. So feel your right leg. And the hip, the knee, and the ankle are about in a straight line. I'm gonna pull the big toe side or the arch of the foot towards the center of my body. There's your inversion. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna to start to draw, like there's a string between the arch of the foot and my base of my spine. And then I just let it fall so that I can, I'm gonna really roll the sole of the foot upward so I can look at it like I'm trying to look at the sole of my foot, right? No chicken turds, all good. Lift it back up, but lift it by rolling the foot. So I can lift it from the knee and the foot's not active, but I'm gonna push, push, push into the foot, big toe side down. Then lift that pinky toe side and let the leg line follow along. Oop, nothing on the pinky toe side either. Take the kneecap back up towards the sky and lengthen it out. So you might find a rhythm, <clears throat> faster or slower, that you and your body appreciate. Big toe side. Drop it open. Back to that flat foot and take it out long. Always that idea that somatics doesn't have to be a specific movement pattern. So if you start to feel too patterned, and you'll know if you're feeling too patterned because you don't have to pay attention anymore. That's one of the signs. Just remember somatics is a, again, it's a voluntary movement. We should have to think about it. We're asking our body to do something. And if you're not having to ask it, it's just rolling right out of you, then I suggest changing something a little bit. So if that leg's long, you might, Turn the big toe side in, but then take it wider out to the side over here somewhere. And then roll to that big toe side. 
Look at the sole of the foot. So we get a little rotation through the torso. We'll lift back up by pressing back down. So vary it a little. You don't have to have your foot land in the same spot every time. Take it wide, take it to the middle. Back down and out. Do maybe two more on this side. Inversion, let the leg be heavy and push that pinky toe side down, lift the arch so you can even lift the sole of the foot up, right? Try to put back down, come onto the big toe side, press that big toe side, the arch down. Let the leg follow it. You can look at the pinky toe side. Right, what did we say? One more. <laughs> Bring it in. Drop it open. Back up. And across. All right. Take the legs long. Shake them out. Okay. So we're going to get off our sit bones and our hands. I need to take my mat back. You can do the same. It's nice to have a slippery floor here. Okay. Hopefully I'm still in your vision here. So you may want a pillow now underneath your head, a pillow or a blanket. I'll put mine at that end. I will remove my mic here while we do this. Um, we're going to work now more on, we're going to work our way up into the hamstrings a little bit more because the hamstrings are, are generally buggers. Um, and where somatics is about isolating muscles. To me, the goal is we're isolating muscles so that we can feel them as a part of the whole. And oftentimes if there's something going on in the hamstrings, for instance, most people will say my hamstrings are tight but typically tight is also weak, then that may affect your low back. It might affect your knees. It might even affect your ankles, right? So feeling it from a sense of wholeness, but, but <clears throat> focusing on using the hamstrings and the glutes. So we're on our belly, and your upper body is taking a little beach vacation, so you can let your upper body be wherever it wants. You could cross opposite hand to elbow. Let your head rest. I'm gonna take a position so that you can still hear me. So do as I say, not as I do. Your elbows might be out at the sides. You could put that blanket or something underneath you, right? Just upper body relaxed. And then I just want you to shake your legs out a little bit. Think of that internal and external rotation we did. You can rock your hips side to side. Maybe even take the soles of the feet up and rock the legs side to side. There's another version of internal and external rotation. Moving them around. And notice, so when we, this is the movement we're gonna be doing, when we bend the knees and take the heels up, that shortens the hamstrings, just because that's the knee is coming into flexion, and that's what shortens the hamstrings. It's the hamstrings that have to contract to get that knee, so if you start to pull your heel, you'll really feel it, like there's the contraction, right? But for now, let your legs relax. So my right leg is closer to you, so I'll start with my right leg. Center right leg and you're going to lift the foot up and stack, I mean, not be exact, but stack the heel over the back of the knee so your leg is in a 90 degree angle. And then just push the thigh into the ground. It'll almost feel like your hips popping up off the floor, that right hip, but don't let it. Push the thigh down and notice when you push the thigh down, how you'll feel a little more muscular action around the thigh. And then just let it go and relax. So this is the first part of contracting or shortening those hamstrings. Bend the knee, push the thigh into the ground, and the left leg is entirely relaxed, and then let it come back down. Let's do one more, just bending. Meet the resistance of the floor with the thigh. So can you feel that action in the thigh, the hamstrings, you might even feel those glutes going, right? And then let it go. All right, we're gonna add on to that. So now you're gonna bend the knee, push the thigh into the ground, but once you Push the thigh down, you feel that leg slightly active, I want you to lift it slightly off the ground. As you're lifting, <clears throat> try to reach the knee towards the back, so keep the leg long. Lift it up, now you're really gonna feel hamstrings and glutes. Take a few breaths there. Slowly let it come down, all the way, shake it out. So that's the movement pattern. We're bending the knee, 
pushing the thigh down, then lifting the thigh up. But here's something we wanna look for. What will often happen is we can go back to this idea of internal external rotation. So for most people, it's gonna be a lot easier to lift your thigh off the ground if your heel falls towards your left leg. So that's external rotation of the hip. We don't want that. We don't want it to always be easy because this is a compensation. So what I'll encourage you to do is some of them, your heel could stay, like it, make it feel like it's in the middle. You could drop the heel inward towards that back of the left leg and lift up, but notice how your right hip lifts too. But then also sometimes when you lift, let the heel fall outward and try to lift. A whole different line of muscles because now you're in internal rotation for that thigh. And then we're letting it come down and relaxing it. So you don't have to do all those in one lift, but I might lift up, push into the ground, let my foot fall outward a little bit. So that's that internal rotation, lift it up, feel that, let it come down and relax. Taking your time, just focusing and feeling that right leg, the muscles in the buttocks, the back of the thigh. Press, imagine pushing your heel up towards the sky. You can hold it for a little while. Let it come down and then the complete relaxation. Shake it out. Heel over. Press the thigh down. Lifting up. You might hold it for a few breaths. Coming back down and letting it rest. If you need to rest on one cheek, remember to keep your upper body relaxed. The other thing we may notice when we do this is if the whole hip is lifting, so if we're in that external rotation, there's going to be a compression in the low back. So what you can do to avoid that compression in the low back is before you lift the leg, push the front of the pubic area. Yes, I said pubic area. Push the front of the pubic area down into the ground or think of pushing your tailbone slightly into the ground so your pelvis, the front of the pelvis, stays in contact with the earth. Then reach your knee back and lift up. So keeping the pelvis supported, almost pressing into the earth slightly, then lifting up. Oh, let it go. It might feel like more work if you do that. And these are just all different ways to explore, right? Do one or two more if you'd like. Bend. Press the thigh down. Maybe you're just closing your eyes and resting now. That's okay, too. But hamstrings are definitely, they can be buggers. They're muscles that can tend to pull if they're short. But short doesn't mean strong. A lot of times they're short and weak. So feel them. They're shorter. We're shortening them when we lift, actually. And they're strong. And we let them come down. And they're long and not, not long and weak, but long and relaxed. Long and relaxed. Shake it up. All right, so we're going to switch sides. I think you can see me if I stay where I am. I could flip around. <clears throat> but first, thing, first things first, feel free to swing your legs around. The front of the body, relax. And cue the left leg. So we want to first just bend the knee. Push the thigh into the ground. And notice you might feel that little bit of the left hip popping up. Right leg's on holiday. But you also want to feel the, that wrapping of the muscles around the bones. And then just let it go. Let it relax. Shake it out. Flop it around like a fish on a pier. Bend the knee again. Push the thigh into the ground. Let it go. Relax it. We'll do that one more time, just the meeting the resistance of the floor with the thigh and noticing what comes out of that in the back of the left thigh and the buttocks and then releasing it. And then we're ready to add on to that. So we'll bend the knee, press the thigh bone into the ground. But now once you've got that partway active, lift the thigh off the ground. Imagine dragging pulling the knee towards the back of the mat. So your knee is reaching back, your thigh bone is long. Reach straight up, push through the heel a little bit. And then take it down slow, slowly take it. Because there's like, we're up here, it's a lot of work, and then gravity says, oh, but don't do that. Take your time coming down, feeling those muscles release. All the way through, relax the foot down, shake it out. 
Notice what you're feeling instinctually. If you lift up wherever your foot wants to be. And then play with that internal and external rotation of the thigh and hip. So I might lift up if I want to feel the easier version. I can let my foot fall inward to the middle of the mat and lift up. And then I'll notice my left hip lifts more. That's the external rotation of the hip. Take it down, let it go. But I can also try it the other way. Press into the thigh, drop my foot out to the left, and then lift up. Notice if you can feel the difference in the muscles in the back of the thigh and also in your low back, because remember everything's connected. Even when we're trying to isolate the movements to focus on different parts of the body, the, the goal of the isolation is to feel the whole. How do these muscles affect your whole body? How do they affect your low back? Is there anything going on in your shoulders? Can you keep your shoulders relaxed, your head and your neck? Just working on engaging what needs to engage to lift that thigh up, which is generally the back of the thigh and the buttocks. And also feel the lengthening through the front of the thigh. Letting it come down. Lengthening through the front of the thigh is important because we're taking the hip into what we call extension, which if you sit a lot, that's the opposite of that. So we're lifting that up. Taking it back down. Letting it go, shaking it out. You can do a few more on this left side. Push the thigh down. Might even hold for a few breaths. See if you can keep your right leg quiet and relaxed. <laughs> and then let it go. All right, shake both legs out. As the final round of that. All right, so now we're going to do the whole leg line. It'll be a little bit different if in between you need to change your body at all, your upper body to be comfortable. Please feel free to do that. But what we were doing is was focusing a little bit more on uh, the back of the thigh and the buttocks. Now we're going to keep the leg long. We'll go back to the right leg first. So the key with this one is that when we lift the right leg, we don't want to bend the knee. I know I just told you to bend the knee, so forget that. Keep the leg long. And what, what can help us to keep a leg long is imagine your big toe. You just had a lovely pedicure on your big toe. And you're going to reach your big toe away from your leg. So towards the back end of your mat or your blanket. Reach it first and then lift it up without bending the knee. So if I don't reach the toe, it's really easy to lift just the lower leg. And I'm in this partial bend of the knee. I want to keep the leg long and lift from the thigh. There goes a cramp in my foot. And then take it down. So you're reaching long. Think of lifting the whole leg. So now you want to lift from the hip crease all the way up here. Whole thigh bone lifting up. Take it down. Relax it. <laughs> so get the whole front of the leg long. You can hold for a few breaths. So this is another one where one of the compensations is not only that we might bend the knee to lift up, but also that we, we will drop the foot out or in. So see if you can reach straight back and lift the inner thigh as much as the outer thigh. And let it come down. Doing just a few more for that right leg. You might be lifting and dropping down, shaking out, or holding for a few breaths at your end point. You can keep that left side quiet. Relax it. I'm going to do one more on the right side. So reach the big toe back, lift the inner thigh. So it's like this solid surface through the back of your buttocks, your right thigh, even the calf muscle. And let it come down, shake it out. Before we do the second side, feel free to take your heels up and rock them. Make, you can make circles with the knees, right? Juicy knees. Hydrate those knees with a little bit of movement. 
let the legs come down. We're going to do that same thing on the left side. So right foot relaxed. Feel your whole left leg line from the hip crease to the big toe. Reach your big toe back. The other way you can feel the activation is if you reach the big toe back and then slightly press the top of the foot into the ground. Notice what happens if you are pushing your toenails down into the ground. Then lift it up from the inner thigh. Whole leg lifts. So not this partial bend the knee lift up. It's the long leg and it's like you're lifting your foot from your thigh. And then letting it come down. Shake it up. So decide what's appropriate for you. You can lift up and hold for a few breaths at that end point. We hold the body, the position, not the breath. So you're breathing through it. Might even feel that little tightening through the low back. We're strengthening the low back. But then we let it come down. We let it all relax, soften the belly, can wiggle the hips. You might even notice that one leg feels stronger, weaker. Letting it go. And take one more if you'd like. Getting towards the end of our program today, our lovely legs. And drop it down. Nice. So because we've had the legs in extension, it might be a good to stay on your backside and hug them in. You could also roll on, or I'm sorry, on your front side, you could roll onto your backside. We are going to do one more that'll kind of make our hips feel juicy and sweet. The other thing is you can press back if you'd like to practice child's pose, do that. Take a moment to another yoga recess to do what you need to do. I need to fix my microphone. And then we're going to come up onto all fours. And if your knees don't like this, then just skip this one. You can go onto your backside. We're going to finish on our back anyhow. But if you want to double up your padding underneath your knees, you could do something like this. Just give them a little more padding. So all we're going to do is we're going to start with our knees together. So bring the inner knees all the way together. Take your hands wide and then keep your arms strong so my wrists are actually wider than my shoulders. And I'm going to keep those knees together and drop my hips to one side. Just a nice little stretch there. But then notice as you lift back to the center, feel the muscles on that outer hip lifting. And then drop to the other side. So this is more of a movement from the hips. Lifting back to the center. Super simple. Just dropping from one side to the other. Take your time. Knees together. You can pause, feel that stretch through your waist too, and then feel the strength of the hip and the waist lifting you back to the center. And then because I always think this is a nice pair of poses, if you'd like, you can take your knees wide apart and just make some circles. You can come forward. I'm going to turn sideways so you can actually see me, but you can stand that blanket if you'd like. Wide knees. Circle. And notice you're circling your pelvis, but notice how your knees are moving. You might even choose to take the tops of the feet to the floor, roll your toes under, stretch the soles of the feet so you can get the ankles involved in this. Torso's moving too, but let your legs just find a nice little happy dance. You can close your eyes. Last one. Feel the mobility on that nice fluidness of the joints, the hips, the knees, and even the ankles. Okay, and then please settle in back onto your backs. I'll encourage you, because we did do legs, if you've got that extra blanket or pillow, bed pillow, whatever works, and you like to extend your legs during relaxation, then please consider putting a blanket either under the knees or under the thighs, because that'll make them feel more grounded, more relaxed. You might even put something on top of the thighs. I have sandbags that I will often put on top of my thighs for more relaxation. 
So letting the thighs be heavy, come down. You can jelly roll your legs, roll your ankles in circles. Let's see how far apart your legs want to be. Is there more relaxation in your low back and your pelvis with the legs wide apart? Maybe the toes turn out. Or do you like them closer together, toes pointing up? So how can your leg line help to release the back of the body into the ground? How can it support release through your torso? And we come into this space of stillness in our body. Be enjoying that though the body is still, you may have a sense of tingling, warmth, maybe even fatigue in the body, in the lower half of the body where we were moving and working. Do your best to keep yourself centered and present in your life. You can practice the simplicity of using your breath to notice on your inhalation and let go, release on the exhalation. Just recognizing the way that the body's always changing. We feel a sensation and then it's gone and then we're on to the next one. The sensation of your breath is always there, but even that may change where you're breathing to, what's moving with your breath. I'm going to invite you to stay here as long as you'd like. Feel the support of the earth, maybe under your heels. Notice if your thighs are resting on the ground or maybe on a blanket. Everything touching the earth, the buttocks, back and spine, the shoulders and the arms. Just let the earth come up and wrap itself around the weight of your body like a blanket. Are you noticing too, do your legs feel light or heavy? Do they feel floaty or like they're sinking? It's not a right or wrong. It's your interpretation of the subtle body, your subtle body, and how these movements might affect not only our physical joints, but the energy in the joints. Thank you for loving your legs with me today. They do take us some lovely places and I hope they take you many more lovely places, but also recognize that they can be used to take us away from things that don't serve us. Peace, joy, love and light. Namaste.